Today on Anime Days, a review of Lucky Star, a show described by many of its fans as a shining spectacle of plotless comedy, while being described by others as nothing more than Kyoto Animation's attempt at creating run-up-the-mill otaku bait. Which is it? Well, stay tuned and find out. The slice of life genre. Wikipedia defines it as the portrayal of, quote, events in a character's life. It may or may not contain any plot progress and little character development, and often has no exposition, conflict, or denouement, with an open ending. It usually tries to depict the everyday life of ordinary people, etc., etc., end quote. As such, it always amazes me how people can bash shows of this genre as being too boring, since, in their words, the characters run around, talk to each other, and make jokes, or they talk about things and occasionally walk around or move a little. I mean, it's the characters' everyday lives, right? That's like criticizing a musical as having too much singing or being too musical for its own good, whatever that would mean. And so we have Lucky Star, a 2007 anime done by Kyoto Animation that follows our four main characters, Konata Izumi, Miyuki Tokara, Kagame Hiragi, and Tsukasa Hiragi, as they go about their everyday lives. Even though people describe this show as having no plot, you could just as easily describe this show as four girls trying their best to make it through high school. So with a broad and generic plot device as such, you can expect pretty much anything from this show. And it sure delivers just that, from annoyingly long conversations about food, to comiquette, to maid cafes, to the obligatory beach episode. Miyuki-san, you're rich. Have you ever split watermelons? I can't say I've ever done that. Hmm, on second thought, I guess I can't really picture rich people doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, I guess you're right. Having been based on a four-panel comic strip, there isn't much of an overarching story to this anime, with the series being entirely episodic, and as such, can be watched in any order with no confusion whatsoever. There is an exception, however, and that would be the ending segment of each episode called Lucky Channel, but I'll get to that later. Much of the interaction throughout the show is done through dialogue, with occasional fully animated bits sprinkled throughout, like the Field Day episode. Being a primarily comedic show, I'd expect there to be a lot of humor present. Sadly, this isn't always the case, or at least for me it wasn't. I mean, I did find certain parts funny, but a lot of the jokes were either boring or completely went over my head since I didn't always understand the references, and some of the everyday jokes were just not funny or downright annoying. For this reason, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone who hasn't seen much anime already or doesn't know much about otaku culture since a large portion of the show's comedy rests on your knowledge of those things. As much as I like the characters, they are your usual otaku pandering stereotypes. You have Konata, the self-confessed otaku who represents pretty much every otaku's dream girlfriend. I found her to be the most entertaining of the main characters, as I'm sure most others do. Next is Miyuki, the refined, rich, intelligent, and most moe character of them all. Kagami, the tsundere, and more mature twin sister who is always yelling at Konata, but in a friendly kind of way, and can be quite funny at times. And finally, you have Tsukasa, the clueless younger twin sister, who is about as normal a character as you'll find in this show. There are a few minor characters, like Miss Kudoe, the single otaku teacher, Konata's father, the otaku pedophile, and her older cousin, the police officer, as well as a group of six other somewhat major characters who are introduced later in the series. So overall, while the characters themselves are likable, they still fall within generic overused stereotypes with essentially no character development to speak of whatsoever. バチッてしなかった、静電気。いやー、なんでだろう。こなたはいつもパソコンの前に座ってるから、体に変な電波溜まってんじゃないの?でも本当冬は嫌ですよね。人の手とか触ってもバチッとなることあるらしいわよ。
As I mentioned earlier, nearly every episode ends with a special segment called Lucky Channel, which I can best describe as a sort of commentary for the actual Lucky Star episode that preceded it, which ultimately turns into a sort of dark, work harassment type drama. Unlike the Lucky Star show itself, Lucky Channel does have something of an overarching plot, which is why I'm trying to stay vague about it, but I will give it this compliment. Lucky Channel is actually quite interesting, and entertaining, and pretty funny, especially as it nears its end, and even if you don't like Lucky Star itself, you may still like the Lucky Channel segment, so definitely give it a watch. The art and animation in Lucky Star is definitely one of the show's high points. Although there aren't many scenes of rapid animation other than walking and talking, the background art is surprisingly detailed, as are the character designs, so this show is indeed very good on the eyes, especially the opening sequence. Additionally, I must admit that the chibi character designs are unbearably cute and I almost found myself wanting to pinch their tiny little cheeks and make woogly noises at them. Interestingly, there isn't much to say about the music in Lucky Star because, well, there wasn't much of it. Some episodes feature a karaoke segment where Konata sings some random anime song with all her little heart. <laughs> But that really isn't music as opposed to the voice actress just singing. Nonetheless, the opening sequence of this show is quite possibly the most catchy theme song I've ever heard. It's so upbeat and catchy, while very peculiar all the same, that I can't bring myself to believe that this song's composer was sober when writing it. On a side note, as Japanese and seemingly impossible to dub as this song sings, it's given rise to the best fan dub I've ever seen, period. Have you ever wondered what it's like to go on an amazing journey? And anime is everything you'll ever need. Overall, I did enjoy this show, quite a bit actually. It wasn't groundbreaking or a masterpiece in the least, but it was pure fun and entertainment and didn't take itself too seriously. A word of warning however, the first half of the first episode is horrible, straight up. I actually dropped this series for a few months before giving it a second chance after watching the f just the first half of that episode because I literally fell asleep. So to anyone who wants to give it a shot, please, please, please watch any other episode first to get a true idea of what the series is about. Ultimately, I'd recommend this series to anyone who's already seen a few different anime and who like a bit of situational comedy with cute characters throughout. With no character development to speak of, this anime is not for anyone who wants a serious or mind-boggling show, but for those who simply want a good laugh and some funny character interactions, this is the show for you. I give this anime a 7 out of 10.